Let's look at an example of finding area between curves, the Gini index. In general, with two curves, g of x and f of x, we want to find the area between those curves. The curves might uh, switch places and overlap each other. And so one way that we could write that in general to account for the differences in the curve, one being above the other, is we could write it as the area is the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x, but we enclose that with these absolute value signs to indicate that we always want the positive height between the two curves. And now when it comes to actually calculating it, we need to deal with cases uh, where f might be a larger than g or vice versa, and we'll break it up into those individual cases when we do the calculation, but this is a nice way to write it in general. Okay, the Gini index. Now, I don't know if that's Gini or Guinea or Gini. I really um, don't know, and I might pronounce it different ways as I'm going through the video. So, anyway, the Gini index measures the degree of inequality in the distribution of income in a country. The more nearly equal a country's income distribution, the lower its Gini index. For example, a Scandinavian country might have an index of 0.25 sometimes written as just 25. And the more unequal a country's income distribution, the higher its Gini index. For example, a sub-Saharan African country might have an index of 0.50 or just 50. The Gini index is a scale from 0 to 1, also sometimes written as 0 to 100, since it can be interpreted as a fraction or percent, as you will see. If income were distributed with perfect equality, the index would be zero, and if income were distributed with perfect inequality, that is, imagine a case where one person had all the income and everyone else had no income, in that case, the index would be one, or it might be written as, a, as 100. Now, to calculate the Gini index, we fir first look at the Lorenz curve. The Lorenz curve indicates the fraction of the income received by the lower fraction x of the population. So these are some examples here of Lorenz curves, actually including the blue one. All of these are Lorenz curves. And one extreme case is the Lorenz curve L of x equal to exactly x. This would imply everyone earned the same income because you have a situation where, let's say, the bottom 1% of the population earned exactly 1% of the income, and the bottom 10% earned 10% of the income, and the bottom 50% earned exactly 50%. And if it was precisely that one-to-one uh, -one correspondence, income to a fraction of population to fraction of the income, that would mean everybody earned the same. And another extreme case is here, part two, case where the Lorenz curve is actually zero. It's not pictured in the graph, but let me see if I can draw something like what it would look like. So if we were to look at this case, it would be a graph where the function just remains zero for all of the population up until the top 100%, where suddenly that included everybody, and the value suddenly hit 100% of the income. So there would be a discontinuity in a graph of this shape, uh, of this, you know, defined in this way, it would have this sort of uh, um, appearance. In this case, we have a situation where there was one person earning all the income and everyone else earned nothing, and we could call this extreme inequality or something we could refer to as perfectly totalitarian. Now, the Gini index for a country is based on its income distribution as given by that Lorenz curve. The Gini index, G, is the area between the line y equal x, which would represent perfect equality, and the Lorenz curve, divided by the area below the curve y equal x. So here I have the line y equal x, and if I look at the area below that curve, I have the triangle. So I'm, div I'm finding this blue area, and then dividing by the area of this entire triangle. Right? G the Gini index is that shaded area as a fraction of the area of the triangle that's shown. So that's how you can end up with no area or 100% of the area. 
Okay, let's look at a few questions that involve the Gini index. Number one, part A, show that the Gini index G is twice the area between the Lorenz curve and the line y equal x, that is g equal 2 times the integral from 0 to 1, x minus l of x, uh, integrated with respect to x, where, l, of course, l, x, l of x is the Lorenz curve. So if we go back to our definition, what is the Gini index by its definition? It's the area between the line y equal x and the curve y equal l of x, all divided by the area below that line y equal x, specifically on the interval from 0 to 1. Now, finding that area, I can set it up as an integral from 0 to 1 of the difference between x and the curve L of x, generally in absolute value, but I'll make the assumption that L of x is always less than x for any Lorenz curve in that particular circumstance. So that just simplifies to x minus L of x without the absolute value, since x, I'll assume, is always larger than L and I'll need to find this area below the line y equal x, and that's just going to be equal to one-half. That's the area of the triangle. Go back and look at the picture for a second. The area of this triangle is the area below the line y equal x. So you find an antiderivative and plug in the bounds, and you get one-half for that area, for that triangle that's on the interval 0 to 1 below the line y equal x. So that's the denominator. That's the denominator in my definition. My definition is area between y of, sorry, the, the area between y equal x and y equal l of x, all divided by the area below y equal x. So the area below y equal x is this 1 half. And since I'm dividing by 1 half, I can flip that to make it 2. And that's where we get our sort of formula for the value g that we call the Gini index. So let's move on. What's the value of g in a perfectly egalitarian society where everybody has the same income? And what's the value of g for some perfectly totalitarian society where a, cer certain, a single person receives all the income? So starting off with perfectly egalitarian that would be um, this case where L of x is equal to x. So if L of x is actually x, in my definition or formula for the Gini index, I get just x minus x, and that's 0, and so that integral is 0. But what about the perfectly totalitarian society where one person gets all the income? That's the Lorenz curve that's defined in this way. And using that in my definition, I'm looking for the area between x and lx, where lx is this uh, horizontal uh, constant value up until at 1, it jumps to a value of 1. Well, the area between those two curves is exactly this value, x minus 0, on that interval. So simplifying x minus 0, I get just x, and finding an antiderivative, that's x squared over 2. These 2's cancel, and plug in the bounds, and you get 1. So this is the Gini index for this perfectly totalitarian society, an index of 1 or uh, 100. So now let's look at an example with some real data. The following table, derived from data supplied by the U.S. Census Bureau, shows values for a Lorenz curve for the U.S. income distribution in the United States for the year 2010. So you see along here, we have fractions of the population referring to like the bottom 40%, the bottom 60%, the bottom 80%, and what percentage of the income those fractions of the population receive. And so the first question here is, what percentage of the total US income was received by the richest 20%? So they've flipped it on us here. The richest 20% would, I'd have to look at this column here that I, in, I can determine the poorest 80% earn 49.8% of the income. And from there, I can calculate what the richest 20% earn. So let's just part A first. I can say the poorest 80% earn 49%, 49.8% of the income because I have this data point in the Lorenz curve. 
So the poorest 80% earned this fraction of the income. So the richest 20% would earn the other fraction of the income. Right, if the bottom 80% get 49.8%, then the rest of the population, the other 20%, gets the other fraction of the income, the other 50.2% of the income. Okay, moving on to part B, use a calculator or computer to fit a quadratic function to the data in the table, graph the data points in the quadratic function, decide if it's a reasonable fit. Now, there's you could do this on the calculator, but this is kind of an interesting way to do it with um, Desmos.com. To do this on Desmos, you begin by taking this little pull down and say, let's do a table, and then type in the data. Now, to get the quadratic function that fits that data, start by typing y1 and it automatically makes that a subscript for me and because I want to do a regression here a, a best fit I'll use the tilde sort of like a approximately or proportional to um, now type in any variable I'm gonna use a but then so this this is uh, as if I was gonna fit it with just a constant now type in x1 your input values, x1, so here is a fit with a linear function, but I don't want to fit with a linear function or a function of this form, so I'll do caret 2 to make it squared, and I could stop there and say that's a pretty good fit right there, just a function of that form, but it's also, um, so this is, there's no real mathematical requirement to, this is sort of uh, based on a sort of scientific um, process, what seems to be a good fit, but let's say if you want to do in general um, quadratic of the form a x squared plus bx plus c, so I could stop just with this and have another fit with these parameter values a and b, or I can put on a constant and have it fit a quadratic of this form. So I think I'll go with that. So the function that I have is rounding off about 1.3 x squared. I guess if I'm rounding each to two significant digits, this should really be more like 027. Didn't say really in the question how accurate I needed to be, so for the purpose of writing it out by hand, I'll write it this way. That's a quadratic that fits reasonably well to the data. And now moving on to part C, Use the quadratic model for the Lorenz function to estimate the Gini index for the U.S. in the year 2010. All right, so then for this last part, we can use this Lorenz curve that we just found. And we're really finding the area between the Lorenz curve and y equal x, this area, and dividing by the area of the triangle to find g. So in part b, I found this is the function, the Lorenz curve here. So we type in the, write in the function and distribute the negative, combine some like terms, and find an antiderivative, plug in the bounds, evaluate when you plug in 1, and when you plug in 0 it's still 0, so this all works out. All right, so this is the answer I get doing it by hand. I could be a little bit more accurate, perhaps, if I use the calculator. So I'll use the calculator to get a more accurate value. And uh, I think I have some old data in here. So go into stat menu, clear out the old values. and start entering in my new values.
So once we get the data in, we'll uh, go to the stat menu, actually first uh, get the, the window set. And there's the data. Now go to the stat menu and do a quadratic regression, number five. Use L1 and L2 and store the data as a Y variable, function variable, Y1, and then calculate. There's my regression. There's the result. It fits pretty good. Now I can graph the line Y equal X as well. Those are the two curves together. Now I've turned off Y1 so I can look at just the value that I want to integrate, which is X minus this Y1. So 2 times X minus Y1. What I see here is a curve that increases as the difference between Y equal X and the Lorenz curve gets bigger. As the Lorenz curve dips down and the distance between them gets bigger. So it's the area under that curve that I actually want to calculate. So I'll use number 7 there on the second calc, number 7, get the lower limit 0 and the upper limit 1. And find the area under that function, 2 times the difference between y, y equal x and L of x. And I get that value 0.447, that's the Gini index. Okay, so this is the end of the video. I hope it was uh, helpful and interesting.